Good evening, everyone. Grace to you and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Spirit of God. Welcome to all of you who are with us tuning in online from many different locations this evening. Thank you for taking time to be with us. At the end of this service, as we conclude in a little while, there will be no benediction. I will not come back up to dismiss you, but it will be obvious when the service has concluded. And as we exit this evening to honor and further reflect on the darkness that fell on Jesus the night of Maundy Thursday, we're going to leave in silence, and we're going to leave, you'll notice the sanctuary is going to grow more dim uh, throughout the evening. Now, don't be legalistic about this. You're welcome to talk to one another in the lobby. You are welcome to greet each other and tell each other good evening before you leave, but we'll leave the sanctuary in silence. That being said, the fact that we will have no formal dismissal or benediction, we're going to say thank you in advance. Thank you to our orchestra for being here this evening. Thank you to the Redeemer worship team that just led us in worship. Thank you to our beloved and talented choir for all of your tireless effort. Thank you to conductor and narrator Barry Epperly. And thank you to our choir conductor Marilinda Lynch. This is the day that Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. This is the day that Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room, took a towel and washed his disciples' feet. This is the day that Christ, our Lord, gave us this holy feast, that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection. This is Maundy Thursday, from the Latin mandatum novum, meaning a new commandment associated with John 13, 34. We'll get to that text in a moment, but first, would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we worship you and offer you now the prayers of our hearts. Help us to enter the spirit of the upper room, that we may be confronted by your presence and the depth of your love for us. And then prepare our hearts to be fed at your holy table, that we may be bound to you in your suffering, that we may be raised with you into new life. Amen. There's a lot going on in John chapter 13. Chapter is located in what is known as Jesus' farewell discourse. And in it, we see Jesus enacting the service of the cross for his disciples by washing their feet. Here, Jesus was preparing them for service through the most extreme example of washing their feet, adopting the role of a servant. This was an initiation of Christian discipleship, but also a mandate to do to others as Christ has done for us. John 13, 14, and 15 says, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Following this instruction, Jesus predicts his betrayal, and Judas leaves the room. And then Jesus said, A new command, mandatum, Novum, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. How is this command about loving one another actually new? Jesus says a new command. How is this new? Obviously, the Mosaic law already included this. See Leviticus 19. In John 13, we find a whole new motivation 
as the emphasis now falls on group behavior. How should Christians act? How should Christians live? Well, they are to love one another. It was new because the love of Christ that his disciples share for one another was for Christ's sake, and it was a new thing in the world at the time Jesus said this. The new thing is the mutual affection that Christians have for one another on behalf and account of Christ's love for them. Donald Carson helps us grasp the importance here. He writes, the new command is simple enough for a toddler to memorize and appreciate, yet profound enough that the most mature believers are repeatedly embarrassed at how poorly they comprehend it and then put it into practice. With a standard like this, no thoughtful believer can ever say, I am perfectly keeping the basic stipulation of the new command. The new command given in this scene and scripture in the upper room is to be remembered, it is to be cherished, and it is to be followed by you and by me today. Focus on this new command as we continue in tonight's service. But now transition with me to a time of confession. It is time to cleanse yourself through confession. Time to reveal to God your dark places, deeds, thoughts, and feelings and lay them at the cross. God is holy, God is pure, God is clean, and he gave Christ as a sacrifice so that you could also become clean and become God's good friend and companion. The one eternal God loves you so passionately that he sent his own son to suffer for you and to die for you. He died in our place. So remember tonight that Christ wants nothing unresolved. Christ wants nothing unresolved between you and God. On the screens, you're about to see a series of prayers listed in italics, which I will read for us. And following what I read, you will see our communal response in bold. Let's begin. Lord, clear your way in us to see what is important. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we give to you our resentment and our grudges. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we know that our spirit has not been that of Christ. Lord, have mercy. We have sown seeds of hate, bitterness, and resentment. Lord, have mercy. We have been disobedient and ungrateful. Lord, have mercy. We have listened to the powers of darkness. Lord, have mercy. We have neglected opportunities to share your love. Lord, have mercy. I'd like to call our communion stewards forward to prepare. And as they come, please hear these words of assurance this evening. When you were dead in your sins, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all of our sins, having canceled the statement of debt that was against us and stood opposed to us. He has taken it away and he has nailed it to the cross. God is the God of perfect forgiveness. And because he's all-knowing, not entirely sure about this, but here's what I think, because he's all-knowing, I don't believe that he forgets our sins. But instead, he removes our sins, cancels our debt, and chooses not to hold them against us. Because of that, we can get on with this life and live it just as God intends us to. God is the God of fresh starts. God is the God of second chances. And if you need one tonight, ask him for one. I believe he'll give you one. What a marvelous gift. And now... Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are delivered by the Apostle Paul. 
For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So brothers and sisters, come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Come to testify not that you are righteous, but that you sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to be his true disciples. Come not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Not because you have any claim on the grace of God, but because in your frailty and sin, you stand in constant need of God's mercy and God's help. Here at Redeemer, we exit our rows and come to the front to receive the elements from our stewards this evening, and we do so by intinction, which is dipping the bread, the piece of bread, into the cup. And for those of you who are gluten-free and prefer gluten-free elements, we have those pre-packaged on the tray up here as well. There are also kneeling rails up here at the front if you choose to take time to kneel and pray. And as you are ready, I invite you to eat and drink, and may this sacred moment be food for you on your journey. Come, the table is open. God bless you.